welcome, welcome, welcome. We're back in Antara Country Park. Gonna have a quick walk through here. And uh, I was thinking as we... Oh, excuse me, madam. Yep, okay, you go first. Uh, I was thinking we've got quite a few crowds now and we're starting to rake in a bit of cash from our recent additions. Uh, our little forest theme here, doing well, doing well. Far too many swans for a pond, but hey-ho. Um, yeah, so I was thinking we should get a new addition and I think it's time to move out of the forest area past our lovely animal bridge that we designed last episode and onwards and upwards into the step area of the park. However, before we jump on into today's builds, if you always search for the bare necessities, smash the like button. And if you've no idea what I'm on about, smash the like button anyway for the sake of engagement. And let's jump on into building ourselves a sloth bear habitat. Inspiration for today's habitat has come from a picture I saw of a piece of concept art that was going to be used to build a bear habitat in Bristol Zoo here in the UK. And the idea being a big raised pathway going up the middle with a uh, enclosure off to both sides. And it sort of looked onto a hillside where the bears live. This then gives us two sides, which we can put another habitat on the other side uh, in a later episode. I'm thinking possibly the Saiga. And then we will build ourselves a bear cave on this side to house our new sloth bears. Now, if you've seen any of the other episodes of Antara, you know exactly how this is going to go. We're going to start off by terraforming, then we're going to paint on some textures. And I'm actually going to make a couple of new custom mud walls just to surround this area and give it some shape. Now, what you see me creating in the background here is the outline of a bear's cave. And this is a bear's cave that I really did not want to make. I had no idea what I was doing with this and I think that shows. I kind of done that at the very end where you'll see me go back and put a cave together. But while I was building it at this point, I still had in my mind of making a big backstage area, a very zoo-like experience. And I kind of got halfway through and realized that doesn't actually fit the concept of the country park. The idea would be that the country park, albeit uh, funded, does not really have the money to keep building big habitats like this. So instead, midway, I sort of spiral away into this is sort of a temporary habitat. This is something that they would bring the bears to, maybe breed a couple of babies uh, on loan from a nearby zoo, generate some income from people coming to visit, and then they would give the bears back and this area would be reused for another animal. Now, don't worry, we've not jumped straight on into gardening yet. I will warn you before that happens. I know how much people don't like it. Um, instead, I just thought I'd pop down a couple of trees just to get some scale in. And also I wanted to have a look at how we were going to make this waterfall because my original plan was to bury in a enrichment item, the beaver pool, and use that as our water source. You'll see a bit more of that later on. Now, it was around this time whilst placing these waterfall graphics that I noticed everything was getting a bit slow and choppy. And I found the culprit. We have too many swans, so many swans. Which is what's worse is they were already all on contraception so these are just the babies that have grown up so it was time to say goodbye to some swans and uh, this is me failing to notice that i hadn't actually boxed any so i have to go back in redo it again and off they go there we go that got rid of them and then i thought well let's get rid of some deer but i think this one sensed what was coming and decided to start interacting with the crowd and I can't get rid of her. Look, oh, look, look. They love it. She loves it. I, uh, I, I can't, I can't explain this one. Um, I, we're just going to call the vet. And then we're also, just because we don't want it to detract from the habitat, we're just going to, you know, just place this. Yeah. Yeah, see, look, no one can tell. It's brilliant. Um, then I found these, these two wildebeest, which I thought, oh, cool, they're mating. Nope. They're both female. Um... They just seem to be sharing their animations at the same time. Uh, so, so there we go. They're safe because they're cute. Uh, so I did go back and get rid of a couple of red deer just to knock it down a little bit. Um, and it kind of helped, but not really. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what is going on with regards to the lag with this pack. Uh, it seems to be worse than others. Well, let me know if you found that. Um, I, I don't know what to do about it, really. But we're near the end of the, down, uh, the download content pack, so I'm not overly fussed about trying to get it to work buttery smooth. Uh, it's not going to be a, a much bigger zoo. Right, we're now going to move on to the side of the pathway, and we're going to do a sort of up and down section of wood to make a fence. So we're going to start off with these conservation wood pieces. 
I keep seeing these and I do really like the colour scheme on them, but I never really managed to sneak them into builds. So this was an opportunity to use them and go all out. So we, I've made a fence, basically just a couple of rectangles stuck together. We've done undulating heights uh, up and down at the bottom. And then we're just going to copy that and run it all the way around the path. Once I got a couple in, we're just going to sort of move them about a bit. Just jiggle them up, make them in more, a bit more irregular. Give it a bit of a pattern. And then when it meets the end, we're going to bring it down at an angle just to finish it off against the side of our path here. We interrupt today's video to bring you an important announcement. Did you know that every time someone watches this video and is not subscribed, we turn a pair of baby sloth bears into shoes? This is great for the fashion industry, but not too good for the baby sloth bears. Subscribe today and be the change you want to see. And now back to our riveting programming. And now for the top of the path, we're going to make ourselves a planted walkway. So this is fairly simple, just a couple of posts, a couple of planted tree panels. Um, I was just at this point trying out some leaves, but I actually uh, stopped doing that and then went back and added them again later because they were getting a bit too repetitive. So we're just going to move them all the way down the path. Then to randomize them up, we're just going to rotate every one or two of them just so that they're not all repetitive and the same texture. We're going to give them an edge and this is just two bits of painted timber just ran along the sides and then cap off the ends and this just stops those plant panels looking a bit messy on the sides now in the concept art there was a building which i really liked that was just off the side of one of these covered uh, walkways i don't actually have a purpose for it although i did find one in the end uh, but i just really liked how it looked so i thought i'd knock one together and then maybe find a use for it later on now to do that, we're going to make ourselves a wooden tower. Uh, no real reason why we're using the Australian wood for that. It was just the first thing that came up. Then we're going to clad it in the conservation cladding, just to give it a bit more depth and a little bit more shadow. Really annoying, by the way, that we don't have a mid-size rectangle cladding. going to bring it up to the side of the pathway clip it into the fence and then I remembered oh I could probably use it for some power so we're not going to tell anyone about this nobody tell the guests they don't know it's there it's brilliant they don't even care it's our secret and now we're on to planting so all of those of you who hate planting and I say this every episode you feel free to skip along so for the planting we are going to build ourselves up a forest and we're going to do that using mainly using the Scots pines I'm then going to bring in that uh, beaver pool I talked about earlier. Now, this ended up not working and I ended up getting very mad with it, uh, which is a little bit frustrating because if I'd known at this point that it wasn't going to work, I would have probably built a beaver pool out of the animation um, placeables. But unfortunately, it doesn't matter what I did later on, I could not get this to be accessible for the bears. It was what it was. Everything else that I'm putting down here, though, works really well, so I can't really complain, I guess. Would have been nice, but... So essentially, we're going to pop some enrichment items into our trees. And with them placed, we are then going to jump on in to spattering everywhere with plant life. And I want this to be quite foliage heavy to give them somewhere to hide. Oh, I made a platform. Completely forgot about the platform. I made a platform, everybody. There we go. Popped a bedding up there. They never sleep on this. They can get up there, but yeah. So we started off with the top of the walkway and I really like these blue sedges. They work really well in this sort of climate. So I'm going to pop a couple of dried and non-dried versions along the top of the walkway and then some buffalo grass just to add a bit of texture. And then moving into the habitat, the sloth bear actually can use most of our flower patches. So I'm spattering these everywhere and then later on when we add the inevitable buffalo grass, it will tie them all together. And then here comes the nettles. Oh, I love these plants. So basically, as you'll see in the end cinematics, there are nettles everywhere and it really, really works with that forest theme. So a bit like last episode, big fan of them. We'll continue to use them everywhere. They are brilliant plants. 
Um, going with the tropical leaves this time, and we're doing that because I don't want to just paint the terrain. What I'd rather do is have these leaves be the base colour, and then we're going to go back with the autumn leaves and use them as highlights. So we can sort of pop them in just to drag your eye. But what you'll find is, and you'll see it at the end there, is that all these leaves kind of add just a bit of texture detail to the floor. Now, I've never mentioned this before because I've never had really any need to use them in this series, but I love these scariola bushes. So I'm going to put them everywhere because, again, they're a great way of just adding a big pop of green without having to try and put too many plants in. Went back and added a couple of roots to those mud walls just to jazz them up a little bit. And we also add a couple of bushes into the walls themselves just to give a bit of green uh, and break up all of that brown. Here comes the pride of the show, the buffalo grass. We're going to pop this in like we have everywhere else, just as texture everywhere we can. Tie those flower patches together, add another green in there. Just get it all sort of mixed together. Jumping into the final leg then, we're going to get this cave sorted that I've been putting off. So even at this point, I was still thinking of doing a big backstage area, which uh, very quickly became not suitable. So instead, as you'll see in the final cinematics, we just popped in some uh, gates and really just made it a nice area where the keepers can enter the habitat safely without having to come face to face with a bear. Were it in a zoo, I would probably build this habitat quite a bit different and I am heavily considering rebuilding a sloth bear habitat in our next long-term zoo, coming 2024, stay tuned for that. But instead, today it's just somewhere for the bears to sleep, somewhere for them to uh, access the habitat through. And it kind of works for that. It works for what we need it to do. Now then, let's bring in some bears. And just when I looked on the animal market, I found these two beautiful male and female bears. Brilliant stats. So we're going to adopt both of them and get them brought over to our habitat. Now, at this point, I noticed that Caitlin was taking her time here. Yep, there she goes. Very slowly. I have no idea where the other one is. Um, I'm not entirely sure what his name is, so I'm just going to call him Brian. But Caitlin here is picking up our first bear. Where is Brian? Oh, there we go. Okay, so we've got our male. Come on, Caitlin, run, run. Oh, look, there's Brian. I have enough of these guys. There should have been someone there already. So here we go. She's going. I'm heavily resisting the urge to pick her up and throw her to the habitat. And there we go. There's our male. Now, what you don't see in the cutout here is me checking and finding there were like five different escape points in this habitat. I did get those repaired, get those fixed. These guys climb, um, obviously. And there we go, releasing them into their new habitat. And the first thing she does is sits down in the cave and stares at a wall. Thank you for that. That's, uh, I feel like all my work is appreciated. We're also just going to ignore all those animals dying in the upper left hand corner. And you're just staring at a tree. I mean, I feel like my work has just been worth it here at this point. Now, I spent the last couple of minutes just tidying up the rest of the habitat, popping down a couple of enrichment items, throwing some moss onto things. You know, all those little tidy up things you forget to do while building and then notice just at the end when you're about to fill some cinematics. That's kind of uh, that's kind of what we're doing here. So whilst I do that and as we move over on to those cinematics, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the episode today, hit the like button below. And I assume after the earlier message from our little friend here that you did indeed subscribe. If not, I will let him know. That's on you. And I will see you in the next episode of Antara Country Park as we finish off our wonderful Eurasia download content pack miniature zoo and head on into our big project for the year. Can't wait. It's going to be great. See you then. <laughs>